Before we start this session, uh, please be aware that there are, are a written set of instructions available as a PDF in the description below the video. It's worth your while um, downloading it and printing it off to, to guide you once you've viewed the actual video in, in terms of uh, making your own design. Hi, welcome to this session on designing your Illin pipes in Fusion 360. Today we're going to deal with the air intake paddle for a Illin pipe bellows. So I'm going to assume that you have created your basic folder to which you're going to put all your files and then you've created a subfolder called bellows and this will open a new design which you can just quickly save as give it a name to suit yourself i'm going to call it paddle air in and it's in design pipes in fusion 360 in subfolder bellows and we'll save so now that i know i have it saved i'll just hide the data panel and you can see how the name of the file has suddenly appeared up here paddle air in version one okay so the first thing we need to do is create a sketch there's only going to be the one component in this design just the paddle itself where we learn we're going to use it to learn some of the key skills in fusion 360 that we use many times later on on more complicated um, objects in the overall design now we go to create sketch now just to show you where i'm going here as i put a cursor on any one of these planes you can see that over on the left a pair of letters turn blue so i'm going to use this plane here the yz plane click once there and you can see now we have the x or the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and we have the origin the center of the of our point zero zero so i'm going to create the circle and we're going to go with the center diameter circle now you could if you wished and we will later on enter the letter c off the keyboard and that will give you the tool for creating a circle from the center so we bring the cursor to the origin and what you're looking for is the little blue square around the origin marker click once and draw the, the mouse away from the center now you can see this is showing 65.156 millimeters so what we want here is to set that diameter to 120 millimeters this return okay now so that's going to give us if you like the uh, <coughs> What I would call the rear end of the of the paddle so what we want now is to have a line for the forward end of the paddle and we go to the line tool or again you could create to, to create a line if you hit the letter l now i'm going to put it somewhere up here out of the way just to make a point we know it wants to be or we need it to be 50 mil by this design and you can see that it's not in the right place it needs to be centered on this axis and it needs to be a specific distance from the center of this circle so we set it at 50 mil and i didn't mention that we kept the angle for 90 degrees so we use the dimension tool uh, to move the position of this line so click on the dimension tool sketch dimension click on the line 
click on the origin and it doesn't matter where you actually put this so i'm going to put it there and we need that to be 170 again you can change the parameters to suit yourself um, <clears throat> depending on the size of the bellus that you actually want to end up with now we have it the right distance from the origin but it's not in the right position with respect to the axis so we're going to select the horizontal vertical constraint so click on that click on that and click on the origin and it didn't go anywhere so we'll try that again click on that and click on the y-axis so I figured out what I was doing incorrectly there I was trying to align the whole of the line with a point so what I need to do is align a point on this line with the origin so the point I want to align is the midpoint of this line how do I find it I go hunting for it by holding down the shift key let me select the constraint first hold down the shift key put the cursor on the line and see what appears suddenly a little blue triangle with an x on the line click once i've selected the midpoint and i want to align it with the origin and the line moves nicely so now i want to create this edge that goes from the top point of the line and connects with the perimeter of the of the circle and to do that i'm going to create a three point arc when you're creating an arc you create the end points first i'm going to start off with the circle of the x then i'm going to go here and you can see i have an arc that's following it's whose curvature is following the uh, the cursor i'll click there and i'll hit escape to get out of the arc tool and i am going to use a constraint here called the tangent constraint i'm going to say make that tangential to that and you can see that the symbol here arises to show that this arc is tangential at its meeting point to the circle now you can if you wish some people like that sort of shape on the side but what i'm going to do is um, use the sketch dimension and i'm going to click on that arc and you can see it suddenly shows a radius a radial line going all the way back to the center point of a circle of which that arc is a portion and it's showing 238.579304 millimeters of a radius and i'm going to make that 390 and you can play around with that dimension till you get a line the uh, look of which you're quite happy with so we have a circle we have a line and we have a three-point arc now we want the exact mirror image of that arc but going from here to here so we escape to get out of dimension and we're going to create a mirror we're going to select So I figured out what went wrong there. I have a multiple monitor set up and this little window here, this little dialog box popped up on a different monitor. So we have to select our first object, which is going to be this line. Then we have to select the mirror line and we're going to use this axis here. Now you can see that over here i've 
made visible the origin and the the zero zero point the x axis the y axis the z axis and the three different planes so i'm just going to click on that line there you can see now up popped the other arc to mirror the first one so i know it's exactly a mirror image of the first one i don't have to worry about its dimensions okay so where does that leave us we have the makings of the full paddle we're going to um, round now these corners here so that the leather uh, covering for the, the bellows will actually wrap around nicely without leaving room for leaks and we're going to use modify fillet there we pick the two lines you can see that has come in with a fillet of radius 10 millimeters which is probably a bit too much but you don't accept that one you want another one exactly the same so you keep going with your clicking and you can see now we have two rounded uh, shoulders but we want this text here is highlighted so i'm just going to type five and i like that so i'll go with that so five five millimeter radius there okay um the next thing we're going to create is the air intake hole or the hole to house the air intake valve and this is going to be center diameter circle again and i'm going to put the cursor on the y-axis see the way when you get it on the axis a little square arises so we'll do that and we we'll make this 30. again you can set this to whatever value you fancy yourself now what we definitely want to do is position this definitively so that when we create the uh, the drawing from this design uh, we have a good template that we can use to mark out the board that we're going to from which we're going to cut the paddle so we're going to select the horizontal vertical constraint click on that click on the origin you can see there was a subtle little change there on the center of the circle now it actually didn't change position because we already had the centers of the circle positioned on the y-axis but now we want to set its distance so again this is very much up to yourself um, you can set the center of the circle you can take either this line or the center of this circle as your dimension I'll go here and I'll just make that 53 and hope it moves. It moved just nicely. Okay. You need to remember in designing your paddle that the closer you make this in air intake circle to the, the hinge of the bellows, the less angle or the less um the lower the di the, the smaller the distance of travel of the intake valve. So the greater the, vo the velocity of the air uh, through the intake valve will be in order to deliver the full volume of the, of the bellus. So depending on how close you, the closer you put it to this point, the greater the risk you have of a whistling sound uh, during your air intake cycle. So our next, um, move is to finish the sketch so you can finish the sketch up here or you can finish the sketch here and we're looking at it flat on now the next thing we're going to do is to extrude this to give us the thickness so i always go home because that gives us a good view of what the extrusion actually will look like so i go up to create extrusion and I'm going to select the profiles. I will need that profile and I need that profile. 
Now, if you accidentally click there, you'll get that profile as well. And you'll have a bellows paddle with no air intake uh, hole in it. So we just click on that again and it goes blank. We're asked how thick do we want to make the piece of timber or the paddle. And we just, you can pick a number. I'm going to go with 13. Now I know of some paddles that are actually 16 millimeters thick. Okay, so that's good, except it doesn't look like timber. So we will go to modify, physical material. And we should get another dialogue box up. Okay, and there we have wood. Now, you have cherry available. You don't have the imagery for those on this computer. We do mahogany, you can go with pine, they're all the same. And you can go with walnut, and you would oak. So I'm going to go with cherry. Click on the material and you drag it across to the object and you let go of the mouse and then you close that. Now you can see that the grain of the timber is across, across the actual face of the timber which is not the way you would actually make it. So you right click on that face and you go down the dialog box to texture map control. We had already selected a face, so that's selected. And it's using automatic projection, but we'll go to planar. Now we need to select the axis. The axis has gone blue. These have gone white. So the white ones tell us that's done. This is what's going to happen. This, this is what's going to be selected once I click on a, an axis. And I'm going to click on the Y axis. And you can see the grain now follows the Y axis. These controls here uh, let you move it around, but I have no need to do anything other than just reorient the the axis along which the grain is traveling. So I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to hide all these things by clicking on Origin. Now you can move this around, have a look at it from various angles. And once you're happy uh, with the view you have of it, and we're going to turn this into a drawing, and you can see the perspective we have on it, or the face, that our view is right. If you wanted to, to do a drawing pointing that way, you'd look at it from the left. And you can see the star beside V1 on the name of the file, we're going to hit save. Version description, user save, that's all fine. And you can see now that the name has changed to version two. And in Fusion, you can always go back to a previous version. So we know that the view we want in the drawing is right. So I'll just save that there now. Again, not saved already. So we'll do File, New Drawing, From Design. Now you get this dialog box. We'll go with the full assembly. We'll create a new drawing. We'll have it from scratch. ISO standard is fine. Units will be millimeters, but we don't want A3. 
as this will fit on an A4. And we want it to be landscape. We wait while the internet does its thing. And we want to go over here now to the drawing view. And we want to go right. We want to scale to be 1.1, 1 to 1, 1 to 1. And there it is. Click on that. Now, we have three different ways for looking at this. Visible edges are visible and hidden edges. In this case, there are no hidden edges, so we can pick either one of these. And if you wanted to see the timber or a facsimile of the timber, you'd go with shade it. And that would work here too. So it's all a matter of taste. So go with what you, what you like. The only thing about it is that if you are going to print this and you print it shaded, you're going to use a lot of ink, brown ink or whatever inks that you use to, to generate brown. So that's good. And we accept all of that and we get the edges. No, I don't like that thing. So I just clicked on it and I hit the delete button and it's gone. I double click on this and I go, I use that as a <coughs> kind of pun on my own name. Hit enter. And uh, I can put in uh, 0609. And let's pretend I'm a draftsman from the last century or the two centuries ago. And I hit enter. That's fine. And you don't have to worry about any of the other ones. And we'll finish properties. So now we have a nice humorous drawing. Now we can set this up to be used as a template. So you could print it, cut it out, cut out this with a scissors around this edge and use that to mark out a piece of metal aluminium plate or if work directly on the timber itself. And we can find a position where we're going to bore that hole. But we need to give that the hole that hole there some place from which we can measure or identify as being the actual center. So I'm going to the center mark. I click on that. You can see the little plus came up. I'm going to go here as well. You can see a center mark popped up. So those would give us good guides to use this drawing as a template. If you want it simply to follow um, dimensions in your drawings, select the dimension tool. Now, if we click here, you can see it's not 50, it's 40.17. And we'll go for this point here. You can see the way you get the little green square. Click once, you have an end point, and move down until you get to the other end point, the matching end point down here, click once and then move the cursor to the left and you have a dimension. Now the thing about it is this is showing 50.16. That's because we're a little bit further in the paddle than we were where the 50 mil original line was held. Uh, but I'll come back to that. Let's go here and we say, Diameter 30. And you can put it wherever you want. Radius 60. Now, I have diameter on the inner hole, on the air intake hole, but I have radius on this. So I'm going to place the dimension firstly here by one click. Now I'm going to right click. Okay, I didn't get what I expected there, so let's go again. Dimension, R60, I want to change that to diameter. So click on the line. Now I can place it wherever I want, but before I place it, I right click. So I want to change that from radius to diameter. Now I can place it.
okay and still in dimension i'm going to click on that click on that that gives me the 170. click on the set on the center of the circle and on the line that gives me the 53 millimeters okay i think that's all of that so currently it's untitled so i'm going to save it and it'll just take up the name of the original design paddle air in but it's a drawing the location is the is same by default so i've saved that now you can print that directly from fusion but if you want to share it with anybody or have have a, a version of it that you can quickly open or share with other people you're going, going to export the pdf all sheets uh, need not worry about that you can open the pdf if you so wish later on and we hit okay Pipe Mega Fusion 360 Bellows, yeah. And you're saving this locally. Whereas the original drawing is not saved locally, it's saved on the cloud. And there's it after opening as a PDF, and you can print that off to your heart's content and use it as a template. Okay, I think that's us done for the moment. Uh, until the next time when we do the uh, the paddle air out for the other side of the bellows. Thank you.